Hi everyone, so today I wanted to answer a common question that I get a lot and that is if I'm making a long furred animal how do I stop all of these lovely luscious fibres from getting all matted, flattened, tangled and just looking a complete mess as I'm working on the animal. So obviously at some point you're going to have to maybe turn the animal over when you're working on it. Some of it will get fluffed up a little bit and that's just the issue with kind of felting very long fibres like this but you can eliminate some of the issues by my three tips today. Please feel free to comment and say what you do because that would be really helpful to kind of share tips and ideas with each other as well. What I would start with first of all is to say that I would plan ahead so I've actually added the head fur on this little guinea pig here as you can see and I've started to add some of these long fur layers behind the head. Now I've done this just to kind of demonstrate um, how these fibres can kind of mat and tangle but I want to share with you what I would normally do. So I would start on the underside of the animal so that I'm not having to turn over the lovely top layer um, if I start off with the underside, that's the bit that you're less likely to see. And then I would then turn it over and work on the top side and that's the bit you're going to see. So you're not going to be laying it on all of these lovely fibres and squishing them. The moment you turn this over, it's going to flatten, it's going to fluff up and it's just not going to look so great like how you added it in the first place. The second thing is to think about the kind of wool that you're going to be using. So a lot of people will use merino wool and these are merino tops, for example. And they're great because um, they're really well priced. They come in the kits. You can get loads and loads of different colours. But you do need to think about the way that it lays and the way that it can mat and frizz up really easily. I have been trying some other kind of fibres recently. And um, one I want to just mention is the um, alpaca wool. So it is a lot finer and a lot softer, but you'll actually notice it has almost like a silky consistency to it. And so I've been mixing that and the Suri alpaca as well. And um, that's really good. So I've been mixing that into my other fibres and actually finding that it is less likely to kind of frizz and tangle. There's a lot more silkiness to it. It can still end up obviously flattening if you're not planning your animal properly. But generally I'm finding that adding that enables me to have more kind of natural looking fur as well and it's a beautiful beautiful fiber if you're using coarser wool such as um, something like this corridor wool this is brilliant because I always find it looks really if you want some really coarse rough looking kind of fur and not just smooth and, and soft looking you can incorporate that into your animal fur as well the only thing with it is that it really does, because it's rough, it will felt a lot quicker, I find. Um, it's tougher, it's not so soft and fine, but at the same time, if you rub that against anything, it will really, really frizz up and look really frizzy, so you don't want that to happen either. So think about the kind of walls that you might want to use. So my next tip would be to think about what surface you're working on. So a lot of us will be using something like this um, felting mat this is an eco felting mat from Heidi Feathers it's brilliant it's a really nice consistency I can do all my core work on there really really well I don't need to worry about things pulling off and frizzing and everything like that but at the same time when I come to do my longer fur the last thing I want to do is turn that over and then that's going to rub against the material and actually felt my fibres a lot further I want them to just look really lovely on the animal and I don't want them to rough up and tangle. So when you're thinking about what you're working on, think about something that is not going to be fraying your felting. Once I've made my core base for my animal, the actual shape of my animal, by the way, these little markings are to show where I'm going to put the different patterns of the different fur colours. I will then actually take this off of my felting pad that I'm normally using and I will use something like this, which is an actual inside of a really beautiful box. It's a storage box, but I find that the inside is really shiny and it allows my piece of work and the fibres to actually glide against it and not rough up and um, felt my piece. Now, obviously it might move around a little bit, but because it's contained in this area, it's not gonna kind of slip off my lap. Now that's great for if you're holding your 
animal on there and you're stabbing in because it's quite thick I don't need to use a felting pad because um, the, the needle is not going to go through and stab um, into my knee or anything it's just going to stab through to the actual I'm only shallow felting it anyway onto the actual body if I want to get an angle though if I'm if I'm wanting to actually lay this at an angle I can still use your felting pad so you can use the felting pad but then lay something over it so something like um, some satin or silk is really good because it's a shiny material you don't want to get as too much static though so just be careful of the material you're using but for example you'll see that this I mean I'm not going to use this lovely scarf but I want to demonstrate that you could get a bit of material and you could lay it over there and then you can lay your actual animal against it so lay it down along the way that it would go so don't just lay it willy-nilly <laughs> kind of lay it the way you want it to go and then you can actually stab into that okay now I don't tend to use this because this is really kind of thin I don't want to ruin it and also it, it moves around um, an awful lot with my piece um, so I tend to use quite literally just a piece of um, I've not even taken the label off this this is just a bag that my wall came in so I will put that over you can move that around it will slide a little bit but that's fine um, you can get some good control of that and again you would lay in the way that the direction of the fur goes and you would just stab from there it doesn't matter if your needle goes into the plastic a little bit but because it's so thick it shouldn't anyway if you're making something quite thin so you're adding long fur to ears then clearly you would need to use something like this to felt into um, so that you're not stabbing into your knee or into the plastic too much and again something like paper it's just kind of tissue paper but you'll see it's got a really nice uh, shine to it um, you can use something like that as well and when you're making an animal like this with very very long fur what you want to do is make sure that you're not touching it all the time um, that you're not using greasy fingers of any sort and that you wash your hands really well and you've got no extra oils in your skin when you're when you're touching it and what you might find is that you kind of twist it down when you're working on it like so lay it down if, if you have to lay it down at any point then it will go on the nice shiny material and then you can just plump them up at the end so really it's about protecting your layers making sure that you're not getting them fluffed up in any way that you don't want them to there are some tips though really just to share with you to help you protect your wool better when you're working through and making your needle felted animals